Okay, ball comes out. Marius Lowe to Jordan Hendrickse to Sanele Nohamba. And he does that little crossfield kick to Frankie Horn. Inside to JC Pictorius. And that is Rappi. Right, the second fellow week is done. All those gentle international rugby players have had their hammies slapped around enough. But before we get into the craziness of the Six Nations, let's just see what happened in this past weekend's Irk fixtures. First up on Friday, Edinburgh hosted the Ospreys, and the visiting side were on a five-game winning streak in all competitions. But that came to an end in Scotland, as the best-placed Welsh side fell to Edinburgh and fell out of the top eight. Friday's other game was between Munster and Zebre, and the champs are doing it the hard way again this year. But if last year is any guide, they should become pretty tough to beat right about now. Zebre would be pretty tough to beat if they could learn to defend even a little bit. Saturday's early game saw the Lions take on the Sharks, and then stop for Lightning, and then take them on again some more. The hosts took on the Sharks so much that they put 40 points on the Cash Flush Durbanites and a smile on Cash's face. While the Sharks were looking at the cost per win column in their Sage software, Benetton were doing battle against Glasgow in Treviso. Glasgow kept their high standards by bagging a win and all is not lost for Benetton just yet. There was an hour's rain delay for the big blockbuster game of the weekend as well, but once the lightning passed, the Bulls took on the Stormers in front of a packed out Loftus. And how could anyone hope to beat the Bulls with that kind of support behind them? For the first time in more than a year, a South African side has stopped the Stormers. The Bulls used the world-class aerial skills of Kurtley Orenser to put up bombs and win them back, and then in the ensuing chaos, they would score their points. 40 points to 22 in fact, and the Stormers 7-0 streak against the Bulls turned into a 7-1 split. Sorry, but the most I can say about Connacht hosting the Skarlaks in Galway is that it was probably wet. Nope. And that it was probably dark as well. Nope, again. Connacht did what they needed to do to stay in the top 8, and having already travelled to SA, they're looking pretty good for the playoffs. Speaking of the playoffs, Cardiff hosted Leinster and provided another nice supportive step for Leinster on their way to another, uh, hmm, semi-final. The Reese Ruddock All-Stars bagged their bonus point with a 33-20 win and kept themselves safe at the top of the table. The last, last game of the weekend saw Ulster host the Dragons. Ulster are fully in the dead cat bounce part of their coach firing drama and they put on a mighty display against the depleted Dragons. 49-26 to 26 points was enough to put some smiles on Ulster fans' faces after a tough couple weeks. No one cares about the Dragons fans. And now again, the irk stops. Because again, the Six Nations will be starting up for its final two rounds. And again, I will say that this is a dumb schedule and I want everything to be planned out to please me. Me? Me! I guess I'll have to be happy with Italy trying to match their great performance against France with a good performance against Scotland. Unfortunately, and even though Scotland are missing some important players, Finn's boot is just too tuned in and they should be winning pretty easily. After that, we have England taking on a scarily good island. And hopefully, England have not been taking coaching tips from Stuart Barnes this week, or we will have some very unhappy punters at Twickenham. And finally, will Wales be thinking about victory after seeing what France dished up in Marseille? Which France will show up? <sighs> a question that is sadly in vogue again after what France have been giving us week after week. I can't answer any of those questions because my time machine is broken. So just go watch the games and we'll talk about it next week. Now let me see if I can wring some news out of this bitch. Hmm, nope, didn't work. Only the usual transfer stuff like Johnny being back in Christchurch and yet more Lions players answering the all-seeing eyes call in Durban. Hmm, Super Rugby is fully on the go now with the Super Round taking place this past weekend and being super entertaining. And please, don't believe any of this, the Crusaders dynasty is dead stuff. Until the trophy is raised aloft over the prone body of Scott Barrett, they are still a threat. The only other news is me bragging about bagging five tickets for the Springboks vs Island test in July. Reports are that the game sold out in like 30 minutes, which I can believe because I needed like eight browser windows open just to be able to complete my purchase. A word of advice for anyone hoping to see the box live in South Africa this year. Mark the date on your calendar when tickets for certain games go on sale and then be online 20 minutes before that starts. 
These things go fast. The Bok fan base has probably doubled in South Africa since 2019 and it's very, very hard to get tickets. We could probably sell out 90k seaters if we wanted to. If you are planning to go to the All Blacks test at Ellis Park later this year, forget I just gave you any advice. I would like to buy tickets for that game first. Plan everything around me. 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 And thank you for watching me in this week's rugby update. I will see you all next week so we can talk about Ben Earl's incredible performance at 12 for England. Cheerio.